That's amazing. Are there any supplements? Now, I know we know it's a very individualistic approach. Are there any supplements that maybe even that you take or that you would recommend? Because obviously we're, we are dealing with a toxic environment as well. So are, are there any things that people can do to kind of improve their general health and wellness through supplements that you would recommend? Like you said, everyone is different. Of course. But there are what I call the foundations. Okay. That with a few exception, I pretty much recommend to everybody. Okay. And so the first one is magnesium. Mm, okay, I've heard a lot about magnesium. Our soil and food supply is completely deficient of magnesium. Okay. We have an epidemic of magnesium deficiency. Wow. And magnesium has hundreds of different uses in the body, just to name a few. Muscle maintenance, blood pressure maintenance, relaxation, uh, cognitive thinking. I mean, I can go on and on. Wow, okay. Um, there's different forms of magnesium, so the form you take might depend on your specific oh, needs okay. and symptoms. For example, if you're dealing with any sort of brain fog, ADHD, anxiety, depression, you would use magnesium 3 and 8 because it crosses the blood-brain barrier. Oh, okay. If you deal with constipation, you'd use magnesium citrate because it helps move the bowels. A general type of magnesium, which is magnesium glycinate, is a really safe magnesium to recommend to everybody. It doesn't have a laxative effect, and it's kind of like the magnesium that does all the things. Okay. So I would recommend magnesium. I would recommend a probiotic for everybody okay. because our diets are just void of um, good bacteria yeah. and fermented foods. I like to recommend omega-3. Okay. Now the dosage depends. Okay. But I like to recommend omega-3 because our oceans are so polluted. Wow. I can't even tell you, you to eat fish the way that I would normally recommend it if yeah. I weren't worried about microplastics and all sorts of things. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And the last thing in the foundations are vitamin D. Yes. But is very dependent on what your vitamin D numbers are. So okay. that is one lab test that every single person, including children, should do. Wow. See where your vitamin D levels are because taking a thousand IU of vitamin D if you have a severe deficiency is like swallowing a Tic Tac. Oh, okay. So I think that's a mistake that people make with supplements. They don't look at quality. Mm. So they're buying their supplements from Costco, CVS, Walgreens sort of thing. They are either taking too much or too little. Yeah. Are they taking the right form? And so that's one of the things that we offer at our private practice. Oh, you nice. don't even need to be a client, but we make something called a med packs, which are customized supplement oh, packets. I love that. That's such a good idea. And because we make a margin on the supplements in true transparency, yeah. we want to give something in exchange for you doing business with us mm. instead of going on Amazon and just buying supplements. Yeah, yeah. And so we give everyone a 10... Um, or 15 minute uh, free consultation. We'll look at your labs. We send this questionnaire. What are your symptoms? And then we can make the med packs to where we're controlling the form, the dosage, the quality. Amazing. And then people don't really have to wonder whether they're taking the right thing. We will put a link for that in the show notes as well awesome. for all our listeners. That's amazing. I would love to talk a little bit about metabolism. I would love to know, is your metabolism something you're born with or can it be changed? Both. Okay. There is definitely a genetic component to metabolism. And you can tell you have some people who are just that ectomorph body type, mm. that long and mm. lean body type. My husband is one of those people. I mean, the man could just put down <laughs> 10,000 calories and yeah. gain not an inch of fat. And yeah. then you have the people that will always feel at their core um, that it, it's a little bit harder for them yeah, and they have to be yeah. more mindful of what they put in their body and how they move their body. So mm. there is definitely truth to that. It's the concept of um, if everybody ate the exact same diet, we would all still look different. Correct. Okay. But can you control speeding up your metabolism or through negative behavior, slowing it down? Yes. Okay. So it's very much like your DNA genetic code. You have your genes and they are static, but your lifestyle dictates whether those genes express themselves or okay. not. So oh, in a way, that. you do have control over your genes. Wow. So in a way, you do have control over your metabolism, even though all of us are given somewhat different, you know, status yeah. at birth. Yeah, that's amazing. I want to talk a little bit about, this is maybe a selfish question. If somebody had an hour in a day, to commit to exercise is there a 
how do I word this? Should they do the exercise that burns the maximum amount of calories in those 60 minutes or can that approach have a negative effect? Because I was a stay-at-home mom for five, six years and when I had my daughter, she's two, she's almost three now and that's kind of when my fitness journey started. So I would go, I was getting 15,000 steps a day. I was going to the gym for two hours every day. I was getting so much sunlight, so much fresh air and now I've started this job and while it's so creatively fulfilling, I'm at a desk, I'm getting blue light, our windows won't open in our office (laughs) and we're all, we all want some air and I'm not getting as much sun. I don't even look at my step count because it makes me sad. So if I've got an hour, what is the most effective way for me to kind of reclaim the exercise and the calories I was burning before? This is a perfect question to reiterate the concept of biochemical individuality. So I'm going to give you a few examples. Okay. If you have an individual who has a very stressful life, Mm -hmm. a very stressful job, and they are constantly in fight or flight, Mm. them going to a spin class or a high intensity exercise for 60 minutes is not the best use of their time. Wow. Okay. They are in a cortisol response and then going and doing hard, sympathetic, nervous system driven, meaning fight or flight heavy exercise can actually lead them to adrenal fatigue, hormonal (sighs) imbalance, inflammation, sleep issues, and ultimately weight gain That's where the eat less, move more thing is kind of almost disproven in that way. Correct. So there might be people who come to see me and they're over-exercising and I'm saying, you know what? You need exercises that are going to replenish you. I used a fancy word. I said sympathetic nervous system, which is the part of the nervous system that turns on your fight or flight. The opposite is parasympathetic, and that's the rest and digest the cuddle and heal one. Yeah. part of the nervous system. So I might say to that person, you need yoga, meditation, and Pilates during that hour and to just go for a walk and get your steps. And they'll lose more weight and burn more fat doing a less intense exercise because it's bringing their body back into balance. If it's someone who has a very sedentary lifestyle and they have an hour, I would say, okay, let's Let's find, move. Yeah. Let's yeah. move. But everybody responds differently to exercise. Mm. I am not a runner. I ran for many years, never saw a difference in my body other mm. than shin splints and, and hip pain. I hear that for sure. And then I started doing a type of exercise that I would consider high rep to burnout, but low weight. Okay. And that worked wonders for my body. See such a physical change in my body. And, um, and I love it and it feels good. So in general, yes, move get your steps. Yeah. I think walking is the most underrated exercise it is, spoken isn't it? about. People yeah. are like, ugh, walking for old people. Walking is the best exercise. If you only have an hour, Yeah. make 45 minutes of that a walk outside in nature, in the sun if you can. Yeah. And the other 15, get down on the floor and do some weight bearing type exercise. Okay. Yeah. But There's a lot of people who do that hard one hour workout and then sit all day and don't prioritize Mm. the walk. Yeah. And so I say, start with the walking and getting your steps and then over time, figure out what works for your body. Wow. Is it some sort of endurance type cardio, which doesn't do a thing for me, Mm. probably puts me into more fight or flight. Yeah. Uh, Or is it a shorter workout that is heavier weight? And so I always, I'm a fan of working out smart, not hard. Oh, I love that. I never work out for an hour. Okay. You will never see me work out for 60 minutes. I don't think people need to work out for as long as they think they do. Wow. Now I will do a 30 to 45 minute workout and do a 45 minute walk. Yes. Yeah. And so altogether it's longer than an hour, but I'm balancing the very heavy weight, high intensity, short Mm. duration with lower intensity, like a walk, longer duration. And it's the mix of all of that that I think keeps people in balance. God, that is something to think about for sure. Wow. That's an incredible answer. Thank you so much for that. (laughs) 